Assalamu alaikum everyone, Jumma Mubarak. Uh, inshallah we get started. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'uzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina. May yahdihillahu fala mudilla la wa may yudlil fala hadiya la. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسألون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم من يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters I bear witness that there is no god but Allah and there is no other messenger other than Prophet Muhammad وسلم, who is the last messenger for us. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil um, Today, Alhamdulillah, one more blessed Jum'ah. You know, I was thinking this uh, past week about the month of Ramadan and some of the habits that I try to change amongst myself or just in myself. Inshallah, I hope you guys benefited just as much as, you know, I felt like I benefited from the month of Ramadan. But today, Inshallah, you know, I've been talking about the 99 names of Allah. And today, inshallah, I want to continue that journey as well. Um, but instead of three names, which is what I've been typically doing today, I just want to focus on two names. I feel like um, just spending more time talking about these names, because the more I dive deep into them, the more I realize that, alhamdulillah, there's so many more layers to this thing. So hopefully, inshallah, I hope you benefit from this, uh, this uh, talk that I'm going to share with you today, inshallah, just as much as I benefited from thinking about this. So. Let's just get started, inshallah. So today I want to talk about two of the names, and Al-Mateen. And we'll talk about these names together. Uh, and, and you'll see why, you know, as I talk through this, why um, uh, these two go together. And Al-Kawi means uh, just linguistically the strong one, the one who commands power and strength, unparalleled by anything else that exists anywhere. Uh, now in Arabic, we go back to the root word because the root word then has many different variations of that, you know, whether it's used as an adjective and what context it's used. And so the root word for Qawi is Qaf, Wow, Ya, which in classical Arabic means to be strong, have sufficient strength or power. And on multiple occasions in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this name, Al Qawi, along with Al Aziz, the Almighty. So one example of this is in uh, Surah Al Hadid, for example. Allah says, in the Laha Kawiyan Aziz, surely Allah is all powerful and almighty. Uh, in Surah Al Hud as well, Allah says, In the Rabbuka Huwal Kawiyul Aziz, surely your Lord alone is the all powerful, almighty, Kawi and Al Aziz. Now, it's interesting to me is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to combine all powerful with almighty. And like every word in Arabic, you know, it just again depends. On the context. So, for example, the root word for Aziz is Ayn Zay Zay, which means um, overpowering, uh, honorable, almighty. And Al Aziz also happens to be one of the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but more on that another day. Um, going to the second word, Al Mateen, which means the firm one, the one who is steadfast, does not tire. The word for Mateen is Meem, Ta, and Noon. And the meaning of that is someone that is firm, mighty, strong, or steadfast. And interestingly, as I was looking at this word matin, it appeared in the Quran three times, just three times. And in, in one of those times, Allah one of the talks about those who deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his sign. And this is in uh, Surah Al-Araf, we're told, as for those who deny our sign, وَلَزِينَ كَزَبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا سَنَسْتَدْرِجِهُمْ as for those who deny our signs, we will gradually draw them to destruction in ways they cannot comprehend. I only delay their end for a while, but my planning is firm. Let's, let's think about that for a second. Allah is telling us that those who deny the signs of Allah, and denying the signs of Allah is basically denying the existence of Allah. And what Allah calls his signs are basically a clue to us of his existence or about his existence. So when someone denies the signs of Allah, um, you know, two things happen. One, they're deceiving themselves into disbelief. 
and effectively transgressing against themselves, which by extension also means the second thing, which is they're also being ungrateful for their own existence or ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything else that exists around them. So Allah's telling us in these two verses that Allah does not immediately punish people. So if you think about that, you know, we're not being punished the moment we transgress against ourselves. So transgressing ourselves, ourselves is basically allowing uh, either our lower instincts to uh, harm our higher instincts, your intellect and so on, or vice versa, your higher instincts is causing you harm as an individual. So because of this, if Allah were to punish everybody at the same time, the moment they did something that would go against what Allah has said is good for us, then who would be left? So effectively, Allah is saying is that you have this opportunity, you have this time to come back, come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the reminder that Allah is giving to us, that Allah is firm in his path. What Allah has said is going to happen. When are you going to come back? Um, in another place, Allah talks about in Surah Al-Dhariyat, in Allah huwa razzaqur, razzaqul zul, Indeed, Allah alone is the supreme provider, Lord of all power, ever mighty. So what is Al-Kawi and Al-Mateen telling us? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfect power and is firm and mighty in his ways. And not only is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firm in his resolve, he's also firm in the implementation of punishment and reward. And the concept of punishment and reward uh, for us as Muslims should also be something that's, that's of interest. When you do something good, we are rewarded for it. But because we're rewarded for it, we're also accountable for it. And because we do something bad that might transgress against what Allah has said is good for us, we are punished for it. But the reward and punishment should not really distract us from what is right and what is you know, good for, not just ourselves, because what is good for ourselves is also one that will help our community. So one of the phrases we say to remind ourselves of Allah's supreme power is, la hawla wa la quota, and there is no power or might, but with Allah. So when, when there is a Muslim reciting the Azan, for example, you know, and the Muslim says, Hayya lassala, or the Muslim says, Hayya lalfala, it's the, the etiquette, the other to say, uh, is to say, la hawla wa la quota illa billa. There is no power or might, but with Allah. And we recite, when we recite this phrase during the Azan, we're reminding ourselves that all sources of power come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Salah is not only one of the five pillars of Islam, but it's also the path to our salvation in this world and the hereafter. It's basically the gateway to asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy and for being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for giving us the physical presence to engage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. So if we divide, if we, you know, even go deeper into that, you know, the movements of the Salah, the way it has been prescribed to us. Each motion in the Salah has been designed in a way that elevates Allah's presence in our lives. And this is especially true when we go into sujood. So if you think about uh, when we put our foreheads on the ground, we put our hands on the side, it's a position of sajda and it's a position where our heart is elevated compared to where our mind is. So if you think about you know, our mind, we look at it as say, this is the, this is the source that gives us the ability to act on things. But Allah is saying your, the, the mind is on the ground when you're in sujood and the heart is elevated. And nobody, if we talk about spiritual heart, Allah knows only what is you know, in our heart. And that basically is that symbolism for us to say that you know, your heart is the one that drives you in some ways, more so than your mind drives you in other ways. And you know, in the Quran, Allah reminds us also, Allah zikrullahi, Surely in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find comfort or hearts find rest. And that is a well-known verse uh, from Surah Rad, verse 28. And that only Allah knows what we keep hidden in our spiritual hearts and what we keep hidden from the rest of the world around us. So may Allah keep us safe from hypocrisy and keep us safe from falling into those traps and those diseases that Allah calls, uh, you know, sickness of the heart, inshallah, khair, ameen, Allahumma ameen. So going back to power and firmness, you know, all sources of power belong to Allah. And because Allah is the source of power, Allah gives power to everybody else who asks for it. So some of us might be physically stronger than others. And some of us might have intellectual prowess more so than others. 
So imagine a time when you have been feeling powerless in a situation. Our first reaction is to typically, you know, reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reach out to God, ask God for help. And we ask him to help, uh, help us out of our helplessness. You know, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions were getting ready for the battle of Badr, there was trepidation in the minds of the Sahaba. You know, they were concerned that their numbers will be far smaller than those numbers of the Quraysh or the army of the Quraysh. Um, one place it's mentioned that there were 313 companions of the Prophet Sallallahu compared to 950 from the army of Quraysh. So Allah sent down angels to strengthen the army of the Prophet Sallallahu and assured them victory for those who stayed the course and those who um, you know, continue to believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So while the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took his time to prepare himself and his army of companions, he was still dependent on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And we're reminded about this also in the Quran in Surah Al Imran. Indeed, Allah made you victorious at Badr when you were vastly outnumbered. So be mindful of Allah. Perhaps you will be grateful. La Allakum Tashkurun. You know, being shukr, having shukr in our hearts is always something that should come up to us regularly. And in this verse, Allah uses the word also fattaku, meaning reference to the Quran. And taqwa, uh, as you might recall, means having the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or just being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the root word of taqwa is wa kafia, which means to preserve, to have forbearance, to be righteous. So the fear of Allah serves us to help us become righteous, to bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we would be acting in a way that is pleasing to Allah if we have that mindfulness about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So going back to, I'm trying to tie this back to the names Al-Kawi and Al-Mateen. Both of these names of Allah together paints, should paint a picture for us that Allah is not just the supreme power. Okay, it's, I mean, we understand the concept of power, but it's not just the supreme power. Allah is also unwavering about what Allah has resolved to do. So when Allah promises protection, there's nothing that can stand in the way. So al kawi to us is also a reminder that Allah does not need anything from us. Why would the supreme, most powerful need anything from us when we are not able to you know, provide everything for us ourselves? So that's the reminder for us is that you know, Allah is the one who doesn't need us. We are the ones who need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you know, but like all of these names, you know, we need to take away, or at least we should be able to try and take away some benefit. How can we emulate this name? And that's the practical piece of this, is how do we emulate this name? So earlier I mentioned that, um, you know, perfect power or al kawi implies physical and moral power. And physical power, literally, I mean, we think we understand that we don't need to dive into a demon, but what does, um, you know, moral strength mean? So one way to look at this, for example, is controlling our anger. You know, that's a form of moral or personal strength um, or finding the courage to protect those who might need physical protection, for example. That's, again, personal strength. Um, there was a hadith recorded in Sahih Muslim in Al-Bukhari where Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, the messenger of Allah said, the strong man is not one who is good at wrestling, but the strong man is one who controls himself in a fit of rage. So to have moral power means that we have the strength to resist activities that could lead us to tremendous worldly benefits at the expense of giving up our success in the hereafter. So possessing moral strength is better for us. Um, you know, we, we can think of examples probably that relate to maybe the work that we do um, or maybe an activity that uh, you know, we want to participate in, but we know that a portion of that activity might not be, uh, you know, something that would be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because, you know, ultimately, you know, everything for us is halal unless Allah says it's not. And there's, a, there's you know, a few things in that arena. Um, so when we couple this power with al mateen being firm in strength and completely unshakable, we're enhancing the physical and the moral dimensions of ourselves. So in, um, you know, in Sunan of Ibn Majah, you know, there was, narrated, there was a narration by um, Abu Huraira, where Abu Huraira, the messenger, where Abu Huraira says the messenger of Allah said, the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer, although both are good. So strive for that which will benefit you. Seek the help of Allah and do not feel helpless. If anything befalls you, you do not say, if only I had done such and such, rather say, 
Qadra Allahu, Qadra Allahu wa ma shafa'a Allah. Allah has decreed whatever he wills and he does for saying if opens the door to the deeds of Satan. So saying if is a way to allow Satan to, you know, influence you in some way. Um, my dear brother and sister in Islam, you know, we all receive knowledge and wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, um, ignorance is something that is part of our being. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us out of that ignorance. The more we chase after knowledge, the more we chase after the, uh, you know, the, the nuances and reflect on those, that's where we start mining some of these nuggets. Um, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and Islam, you know, he told the angels that he has taught mankind the names of all things. Um, personally, I interpret that to mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, uh, Adam alayhi salam with this knowledge, this knowledge that we all have within our DNA, you know, the imprint. Allah made Adam alayhi salam from clay, as, as we are told. And the imprint of that is, is on that creation from that time onwards. However, to access that knowledge, we need to have awareness of it. And we need to, and, and that awareness comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if we think about, um, you know, how much of it comes to our awareness by sitting still versus actually going after and learning from others or learning from what Allah has taught us, you know, we quickly know that we need to chase after that knowledge. And as Muslims, we should remind one another that there are, you know, three levels of faith. And I'm sure you've heard this many, many times. There's Islam, there's Iman, and there's Ihsan. Um, you know, Islam is the first step where you accept the oneness of God. And Tawheed, um, which is another interesting word, Tawheed tells us that, you know, this is the belief in one God. Now, God is one. It is us as humankind that we need to be reminded about the oneness. So it's teaching us to believe in one God as opposed to God being many. God is only one, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is only one. So that word tawhid is teaching us that, you know, the belief of one God. Iman is having that belief of one God enter into our hearts and then taking residence. And there is, there is uh, you know, a, a beautiful meaning in the word, you know, Iman. Iman comes from the word, root word, Hamza, Mim, Nun, pronounced as Aman. And Aman one of the meanings of Aman is to have a security other than belief and, and trust is also security. So when we have Iman in our hearts, when we truly, truly believe in the oneness of Allah, having that level of Iman before even reaching excellence or Ihsan, we should feel secure in knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever, ever watchful over us. So to have Iman in our hearts is to have Aman. And to have aman means to have peace and tranquility in our lives because of that security. So that security blanket from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is probably one of the best ways for ourselves to just say, there's, there's this, uh, the best protector in the world, the best protector in the universe is watchful over us. And that sense of security is something that I know we all yearn for. And, and inshallah, khair, may Allah give us that level of trust, that level of iman, and may Allah allow us to excel also in ihsan, so that this way, when we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we worship Allah as if Allah is right there, present with us. Inshallah, kulu kuli haza wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum, wa isa'ir al-muslimin, fa astaghfiruhu illa huwa al-ghafoorur rahim. I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and to the rest of the Muslims. So ask Allah for forgiveness, and he is the forgiver, the most merciful. Let us pray, um, my dear brothers and sisters, that Allah guides our hearts towards him. May we all find the strength to stay firm, on the path of Allah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our shortcomings and wash away our sins, and inshallah, Allah is the most forgiving, oft forgiving, most merciful. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina kurrata ayyun wa ja'alna lil mutakina imama rabbana faghfirlana zunubna wa kafir anna sayyiatina wa tawafana ma al-abrar rabbi ja'alni mukim wa salati wa min zuriyati rabbana wa taqabal du'a rabbana khfir li wa li walidiya wa lil mu'minina yawma yakumul hisab rabbana la tuzih qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أن نبنى وإليك المصير ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكننا من الخاسرين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين 
my dear brothers and sisters. I mean, inshallah, I'd like to conclude this khutbah for today. Uh, may you all have a blessed Jum'ah.